Good evening, Volca Knights, or ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> anyway, welcome to a very late night video before our official opening where we'll be talking, introducing you to an extremely exciting project car of ours. You, of course, already know our Opel Speedster that started this whole adventure of Vulcan Alpha together with Lapo and I. Yes. But today, we'll be showing you something that we've been working behind the scenes never seen before and something that we take extreme pride in and extremely are excited. Did I say extremely? Because this build is very extreme that we'll be working on together with our friends at Arius who've been also helping with the Speedster build. And the reason why I want to show it to you is because we want to show you what we can also do for you, for your car, for your race car, for your dream. Uh, that does not need to be limited by TUV or any other regulations because this here is a purebred time attack car designed, engineered to just go as fast as possible. So, Lapo, yeah. I mean, you can tell us what you've been doing on it mm -hmm. over the last X amount of time. But first, in short, this is started its life as a Nissan S13 with probably like 160 horsepower, whatever is usually left of it. <laughs> but there is nothing left of that. And on the front, we have already a big V8. You might be asking yourself, is that an LS swap? No, it's not the classical LS swap. It's a Nissan VK56, which is a really interesting engine because it has a 90 degree V. It has really high-end and innovative, let's say for the era, engine parts, internal parts. And it's extremely lightweight and it's been used uh, the same, let's say, family into LMP2 cars, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. LMP2, LMP3, uh, yeah. Nismo Motorsport. Nismo car. Motorsport, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's a, no, I'm not saying race bread because it's meant for the street, but it was mm -hmm. then taken because it was so good, so, so reliable, it was brought back to, to the racing scene. Is this actually not the engine that McLaren has bought to make their McLaren engines? Because I believe they're running the LMP, the Nissan LMP engines, the, the current V8s. Yeah. So yeah. maybe it could yeah. be, that's the one. So I know. The Daddy, the 5.6 liter started as an NA, but we mm -hmm. have already here two boosty boys yeah. happening. Let's start from the beginning. So the car has been completely stripped down. Uh, it's been acid bath. And then with the experience hand of Filippo, has been all worked out with a bespoke suspension set. So you see this double wishbone suspension in the front and in the back, we have bespoke geometry. He's been working on it for the last two plus years, designing it by hand, old school. This is what I love about him is everything is old school, it's artisan, it's like, many, you know the famous Made in Italy? <laughs> the, he is the famous Made in Italy, so <laughs> uh, this is, to me, it's one of the best projects you can find and I'm 100% sure it's going to perform flawlessly and I'm really, really proud of what we've been developing and what we've been doing on the car because I think it's, it's going to go really high. It's mm -hmm. gonna, it's gonna, we're going to shoot for a high, really high performance. Yeah. So as you can see, it sits really, really low because all the suspension pickup points have been raised up. So the chassis is actually lower. It's not like the normal suspension points of the original car. Everything has been redeveloped. So all the uh, engine cradle, all the, uh, all the um, reinforcements on the chassis, the wheelbase has been extended. Uh, as you can see, this is the original uh, body line of the Nissan. You can see how much wider it is. So everything has been brought to the extreme in uh, to have the best performance that you can take out of a, let's say, originally street yeah. car, <laughs> which nothing has been, basically nothing It's remaining except maybe for the uh, A-pillars. Yeah, from here up to the um, turret uh, in the past, uh, the, the car remained uh, with um, his chassis, but mm -hmm. reinforced with a tubular frame, yeah. like you see in the, in the front. And um, because uh, about the rule in GT class, mm -hmm. the car need to remain... Uh, uh, the silhouette needs the, to be the yeah, same of, yeah, the, the, same. of the, the upper exactly. part. I think it's like the same like they had in the previous DTM cars. Exactly, this yeah. is exactly DTM from the uh, 90s and 2000 areas brought up to the two th 2020 spec. 
Yeah. So what I really love about this is everything has been designed organically in unison. So everything as it should be, of course, but it's meant to coexist in the same environment. So you can see the to tolerances here. This is something that we've been developing. So it's an Intec manifold. It's completely billet. You can see my <laughs> the name. But it's just, Vulcan see, Alpha logo yeah. was not ready back then. No, it wasn't <laughs> not ready. Not trademarked. <laughs> but you can see how close it goes to the chassis and how close it goes back to the firewall. All the CNC milling to have the injectors at the right angle so the spray pattern goes in the right direction for the best atomization of the fuel mix. We've done also CFD analysis to see the distribution of the pressure, a differential between banks of cylinders, between cylinders. Also here, we had a really big problem, packaging problem with the exhaust. So the first idea was to do a four into one normal manifold, and we could have squeezed uh, the manifold that I, I, I actually designed it, but the problem was for a racing application, if they have to swap the engine, if we have to uh, work on the engine, it was really, really difficult to get to the main bolts. So what we opted it was to do a log manifold because this being a turbo engine, it's not really uh, super essential to have really good flow. Of, of course, uh, don't take my words to, uh, mm -hmm. to the extreme, but because you have the turbo, uh, exhaust flow is not uh, really a concern because you have back pressure from the turbine uh, so we opted for having more uh, an easy working area with a log manifold instead of, instead of having a cramped engine bay with a four into one for each bank manifold you can see here we tried to maybe you can see it better here so the wastegates have priority so we can manage the boost in the best way possible all the heat management has been uh, done in italy is something we can provide also for customers. So if you have an exhaust and you want to have the heat shielding done, we can provide this. This is the best uh, solution you can have. So you not ceramic coating because no. ceramic can actually tear up. Exactly. The... This, of course, uh, uh, it I speak be... from experience of my time attack back in the days. It was over 10 years ago. Oh, I had ceramic Formula One technology and then after two races crack, like, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this actually, you can almost touch it because mm -hmm. you have a thick layer of isolation, uh, insulation, and this goes up to 80 to 100 degrees when all it's up and running. Really? Wow, yes. okay. You can actually see it, no? Yeah. 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 So you can actually almost touch it. Of course, I don't recommend it, but you can almost you can touch do it. it. So just to emphasize one more time, the exhaust was done by you, we the design, I we scanned, scanned it. it. I scanned it, we, uh, we uh, this is always together with Filippo. So of course. every decision was made with my input, with his input, to create the best patch packaging. So, so sometimes uh, we had to um, choose not the performance, but the serviceable serviceability. Okay, that's a very <laughs> and, important thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. and yeah. reliability. So yeah. for example, we designed really complicated <laughs> steering rack uh, bracket, which was all laser cut and uh, welded together. But at the end, the simplest solution was just, just a tube. <laughs> just a tube, it was lighter and it was stronger. So uh, even the other one looked way fancier. We decided, well, let's go, let's keep it simple and mm -hmm. go back. Even though you have laser cut pieces, the tube is one of the best engineering friends. Yeah, Ooh, has also your name on it. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So the same, uh, we uh, designed also the sway bar. So all the suspension have been designed, then I modeled in the, in the CAD to have it then created. So you can see uh, sway bars so that have been nickel coated for resistance to the elements because it's going to be really close to the asphalt, which is a very corrosive environment. And the same with the uprights. So the uprights were modeled in CAD and then CNC'd and tested. I actually had all the suspension models so I can see all the um, problems with uh, clearances, with um, angles. So we could tailor all the geometry of the suspension because mm -hmm. Filippo originally had it drawn by hand, but of course, uh, having it in 2D, you don't know how it's gonna mm. actually perform. So when I came in, I modeled it and I said, well, maybe this, we can move out some, in, in some spot. And uh, for example, we had a problem with the steering arms, uh, sorry, uh, tie rods for the steering that was hitting the, the rim. And we didn't know uh, which uh, height to put the steering rack. So uh, everything has been taken into consideration to have the best performance and reliability. So uh, for example, also the intake manifold, I already designed all the front 
intercooler system and radiator system. Mm -hmm. And we had, because I'm also thinking about uh, then the aerodynamics, I had to uh, model the intake mount of hold so it wouldn't go over the hood. So keep the frontal area as low as possible so the airflow would go smoothly on top of the car. So mm -hmm. everything is really <laughs> thought yeah. out. The I really want to talk again about those uprights because yes. they look so sexy. Yes. It's one of the most like uh, like the bespoke part, first of all, mm -hmm. and functional. And uh, f I don't know, for me, for some reason, this is like one of the most impressive parts. As I said before, you need, you need balance. So for this car, having this extreme environment and being tailored for time attack, we wanted to create an upright and suspension um, components extremely tough. So. We try to keep the weight as low as possible, but for us, the importance was it couldn't break mm. because when you go, when you pull like two or three G's on a, on a corner and your uh, upright snaps or a tie rod snaps, it's it's done. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I don't want to have a life uh, on, on my conscience. So uh, we decided to beefing up everything to the ex almost extreme, but well, of course, taking yeah. in consideration the weight. Yeah, because they, they are actually very thick. Yes. So w what material are they made of? So this is 7075 T6 aluminum, mm -hmm. which is readily available, which mostly everything has been um, in motorsport has been made with this material. Mm -hmm. And it's been optimized to be as strong and as lightweight as possible. Yeah, so with extra holes, that's actually for the for the weight saving. Yeah, weight saving and also for afro, because yeah. then we're gonna do uh, already done some air ducts uh, to bring the fresh air to the brakes. Okay, so yeah, brake well, well, for the brake cooling. Yes, it's gonna go, actually it's gonna be a cup that, got, that pulls, uh, pushes the air through the center and then out the, out the sides mm -hmm. of the road, mm -hmm. from the center to the nice. outside. Nice. I put the brake also low as possible in, in the front. Yes. Ah. The brake caliper, yeah, is yes. indeed like mounted low, and this is uh, what for I... For aiding for the center of gravity to bring exactly. everything down. It's something that uh, we are now familiar with uh, from the 992, the GT3 and GT3 RS. That's what Porsche was being very proud about, that they had it like down. Why is it not completely down? Because then you would be like actually collecting too much dirt mm -hmm. from what I've... Uh, well. But the, the thing is, it's something that's been been done like like double wish. I'm sorry Porsche fans, but double wish ones has been out like on the speed in 2002. So it's nothing new. <laughs> I don't know why it's that big fuss in Porsche. I'm sorry, but it's it's technology from eras. Yeah, no, it's, it's But like it works good. It exactly. works good. So. Exactly, it works. It's, it's good. First of mm -hmm. all, I think we kind of finished on the engine. I think maybe at some point we'll talk more about it. Yes. Uh, the the power output aiming towards like fifteen hundred. Uh, yeah. So. so we have two engines, right? This testing engine is gonna be around seven fifty eight hundred, yeah. which in low boost. Then we're gonna have the second engine, which is gonna be fully uh, turned on for competition, which is gonna be thirteen hundred fifteen hundred horsepower, right? Yeah. So. We're going to tailor the aerodynamics at the beginning for the first iteration of the engine power mm -hmm. because of course you can do it as well the, of, the, of a build of a, the, on an aerosim point but if you don't have the horsepower to pull the car in you're going to be slower. So yeah. we're going to make a modular system that can be upgraded in the future, mm -hmm. like in close future but for testing it's going to be simpler design so we can test the car, test the mechanical grip first because it's something you do always first, mechanical grip, uh, chassis, uh, chassis uh, tuning and then after you do, I mean, I, I do it <laughs> like the aerodynamic grip after. Mm -hmm. So I love it. You know, this reminds me of my time at Rimats when the, the Nevera was still in development. Of course, it, uh, Rimats is taking pride in the sophisticated torque vectoring and all the technological, all the electronics, all the sophisticated systems. But back at the time in 2019, 2020, when I was present with the company, it was still basically a scalter frame pretty much. And I actually have a video of me driving it because the goal back then, Matt Rimat said, the car needs to function from the basics, it needs to have perfect dynamics. It, we cannot like, not to compensate like the imperfections by the electronics and TC and ESC. It needs to, the basics need to function and then you start developing actually all the extra. And exactly, I, and you, need, you need to go step by step. So yeah. because if you create too many problems that you don't, you, you start uh, moving stuff that you don't know if it's affecting other stuff. So. It's a step-by-step -step phase. Because, because yeah. You, yeah. You, you can't understand if you got a problem, what is the problem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With too many variables, you start, you start mixing stuff and the best thing is to do, go step-by-step step yeah. so you know what the problem is. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay, well, so far, <laughs> quick introduction on the engine. Yeah. We already <laughs> mentioned the brakes. Yes. Uh, let's speak about the wheels since we're already also exactly. on this front. Exactly, so this is a company that Filippo and his partner uh, have been developing during yeah. the last years. And it's uh, to me, it's a really cool project because it's in-house designed in Italy. And then it's a really cool looking wheel. It's one of the lightest, lightest on the market. It's a forged, actually forged, forged wheel and you can have it in basically all sizes. The cool thing about this wheel is that you have loads of clearance on the, um, on the brakes, so you can fit as big brakes as possible. So it's something that we're gonna also be able to provide to you guys, is a wheel package that can uh, then yeah, <laughs> house yeah. our brake kits and our brake cooling kits. Yeah, exactly. More on them in a separate video at some point, Yeah, including the ceramics. Yeah, definitely very lightweight. And actually, we have there a couple of them. You can also have a center lock yes. version. So why didn't you go for a center lock wheel on this car? Well, because center lock is for a quick, quick pit stop, which is not really a time yeah. attack thing. So yeah. we and go for simplicity, which is just normal 17 millimeter nuts. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 And they're actually very lightweight. Can you show us uh, yeah, how, uh, like your yeah. lateral raises? So Whoa. lateral raises, I yeah. have to yeah. go like this. Okay? Yeah. So they're, they're really light. Yeah. So I think the 17 is, uh, so a 17 by nine is uh, uh, 6.8 kilo. 6.8 so a seven, this is, uh, yeah. 18 per 13 yeah. is uh, 9 kilo. Around 9 kilo. So yeah. you guys can go Google and it's you can see it's for, for a monoblock wheel, it's, it's really light. Yeah. Uh, almost one of the lightest in the market, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm really uh, passionate about these wheels because they're, they're A, for my friends and B, they're really, really good quality. Yeah, so, and they look badass. Yeah. Simply, I mean, the the look of all the com like the complete components is just absolutely sexy. All right, let's move on to the middle side of the car. Here's where you have something very interesting. Mm -hmm. On the cage, we have the mount for the well for all the cylinders, the braking cylinder, the clutch cylinder, and it actually is housed inside the custom panel, which I believe has been 3D printed. Right? Exactly. Yes, yeah. so it's from powder 3D mm -hmm. printer, which still we still don't have. And oh. don't go shopping. Oh, oh, don't go oh, shopping. Oh, I need to buy a <laughs> don't, go <laughs> don't go shopping. It's something we can pro we can uh, absolutely provide. We has we have partners that can make for now. Don't don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. It's called SLS, right? Or what is uh, it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I already done my research. <laughs> no, let's, it's something, but seriously, it's something that we can provide because we have partners. You can see we've been testing. Uh, we I would buy one. We have no space. So the first thing we need. Bigger. Yes. We need expansion first. <laughs> yeah. And then shopping after. Because we um, already have CNC machine coming somewhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, um, I just want to mention like how functional and simple something can be made mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, not only SLS, we can also make it out of filament, right? Yes. It, it, it doesn't of, matter. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's, well, parts like this, of course, uh, it depends on the environment. So in this case, yes, you could have done it with... But uh, it shows basically the possibilities yes. of customization, of utilization of 3D printing and that's what I wanted to show with yeah. this part. Yes. Oh, you remember the uh, the steam rack <laughs> support that we were talking about it, that we didn't use? Yeah. Well, now it's been utilized to uh, do the switch panel. Oh. <laughs> so this is was the fancy steam rack uh, hold, let's say bracket. Now it's a switch panel bracket. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which see, this is ingenuity, Italian ingenuity at its finest. Nice. So so it's like for the buttons or yeah. Potentially, if you decide to like turn it into a sim streaming rig, you could do like your Twitch yeah, uh, buttons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is the gearbox already like the final gearbox? Yeah, what is it? it's a Samsung, Samsung a sequential gearbox uh, uh, with a paddle shift actuator. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be a paddle, a paddle shift uh, yeah. with CO2 or uh, with, with CO? Who puts, puts it uh, no, it's going to have a compressor. Uh, yeah, compressor. Uh, you have an air tank and a compressor, so it's just natural. Mm -hmm. Because the air, air yeah. actuator is the, is the, is the best. Yeah. Okay, it's all right. It, it depends on the application. So for example, for our system, for the, the RBS uh, system, we're going to be uh, developing. developing and selling uh, fairly uh, quick. quick. Um, we, we, I'm opting for CO2 just be, for packaging and because also road cars don't want really <laughs> to have an air compressor running for charging. Mm. And I will, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. it separately. Anyway, it's just like, okay, air actuator, pedal shift option for the sequential yes. gearbox. 
We have there the dry sump, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. what was yeah. like Peterson or something or something? There's a Ross performance uh, okay. from Australia because uh, the only guys that. Um, Give a dry sum kit for a bouquet. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Nice. But if it, if there's a VK uh, aficionados here that want a actually really nice intake manifold uh, for turbo applications, you can actually uh, order it if you want. Yeah. We can have it. Yes, yeah, because for we you. <laughs> probably were the only ones in the world yeah, offering this. Is this is the first prototype, no? Yeah, this yeah. is the first prototype. We already have a V2, which is going to be yeah, available if you want to order it. With Vulcan Alpha logo. Yes, <laughs> with Vulcan, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Amazing. And of course, if you have an own engine that does not have uh, manifolds available on the market, we can make something for you custom, whether it's NA or turbo or from NA to turbo, etc., etc. Pedal box, not much more to say there. AP racing, we still have, we still have three pedals. So uh, yeah. you're still going to be, well, of course, you're going to be using the clutch to just like drive away, yeah. I guess. Yeah, exactly. and then after that, it's just sequential, yeah. just like you have also on some even modern GT3 cars. Mm -hmm. Going to the butt, yes. or whatever is left of it. So, uh, what's the differential here? Because it's been seen a lot in the drifting. So okay. basically this is a quick change uh, differential, been used ton in drifting, you can, and also drag racing, I think, yeah? Mm, I don't know, in drag racing. Well, in, in, in drifting, yeah. so. It's very strong differential. It's okay. a, yeah, a bulletproof differential because all the torque uh, by the engine and the wheels, uh, the, the tires, sorry, because you have huge, <laughs> you just started, so. What's the size of them? Uh, Three, two, five, seven, zero. Five. Yeah, it's a racing, uh, um, racing. Um, it's the same of the GT3. Mm. Race car. Yeah. So extreme, you have a, a extreme environments for differential, which you need something yeah. really tough to handle that. Mm -hmm. So what I was saying is, you pop this cover off, and you can switch the gears inside, so uh, you can Perfect. change the final drive. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you can tailor to to each track nice. that you go to. You can see here all the suspension pickup points that uh, Filippo has drawn. It's also this has been remodeled and redesigned. Um, you can see on this side the uh, upright on on how <laughs> yeah. on how it's designed. Uh, same concept as uh, as in the front, but of course brought back to the rear, so you don't have the steering uh, problem. So it's quite mm -hmm. smaller. Nice, nice. Okay. Well, I guess because we didn't have any more room any in the space, front, yeah. <laughs> we had to bring it back into the to the rear. So the uh, the alternator is here. The radiator. Is so what's it running off the diff or? Uh, yeah, off the diff. Of the uh, well, not, yeah. oh, the crankshaft. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, prop shaft. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, genius, genius. So can we can maybe have a look? Yeah, from here. Yeah. Amazing. It's something that's been already done, also in off roading to uh, to keep it separate, and uh, but it's been helpful here for its packaging reasons. Nice. Well, of course, there's a lot of things missing. Well, what are the next steps? I mean, I think, uh, it's, uh, as mentioned, it's already quite late. I'm not sure if we mentioned it. The goal, eventually, is to hopefully compete in a World Time Attack Championship with it, yeah. eventually. So the, yeah. the starting should be with the Italian Time Attack channel, Challenge, then progress into the European Ch Time Attack Challenge, and then hopefully we're gonna go kick some butts. Yeah, world Time Attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, World Time Attack. I would be super excited because I've been to World Time Attack Championship in 2013. So Ian Baker, if you still like me and remember me, we hopefully will be now coming back. I know you've been asking me every year to come by and just to have some drinks with you as Boosted Boris. <laughs> but hopefully we can have a reason to have some drinks as Boosted Boris because we'll be actually competing in your series. But for that first we will have the Italian shakedown, then the German one, oh sorry, well European, which is taking place here at the Nevercream. And now, like every YouTube video, everyone will be asking, so when's the car going to be finished? When's well, the car you need to ask him. Okay, so <laughs> what's, the, what, what's the, the desired time frame? We hope to manage the um, first uh, shakedown, mechanical shakedown, uh, uh, in September. Mm -hmm. and this year? This year, yeah. Okay. And after um, go to French Accord or Cremona circuit, that is fast track, mm -hmm. um, October, November, mm -hmm. I think. And then we're going to start developing the... Yeah, well, the we're, we've been working on the aerodynamics, so we're going to start actually creating them in the winter. So okay. hopefully we're going to have uh, the first step of the arrow uh, for spring next year. Okay, so next year probably already some races. Yes. And definitely yeah. in time for the European Time Attack Championship. Yeah. 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 And then depending when the World Time Attack will be 
taking place and if we get the invitation please yeah so that's the time frame that's all the exciting parts i'm very much looking forward to continue seeing this car develop and finally of course like the sexiest bits the arrow but now you got the exclusive peek sneak peek underneath and this is what we want to also convey to you to show to you we have no secrets we want to show you what we're doing how we're doing uh, we also like to hear your opinion about it i'm sure there are lots of by the way oh there it comes <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have the possibility uh, we'll see if there's interest uh, mm -hmm. we have the possibility to develop our own vulcan alpha rim yeah so if you guys are interested, let's see, I don't know how you say it, yeah, in the comments. <laughs> no, I don't know. I think but, at the end of the day, people will just like be interested based on the price. So yeah, there's course. a market for everything and some people will be interested in two version application that is coming, yeah. but the world is not only unfortunately or luckily revolving around Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is why we can, I mean, if you don't need to, we got you covered. If you need to, we also got you covered because we have parts that will be just a bit Less performant for the street, but more performant than the stock part, of course. Of course. Anyway, um, that's, again, we start talking a bit nonsense. I think mm -hmm. hopefully you finished, uh, you enjoyed this video. Most importantly, again, that it showed you the possibilities that we have, that we can do. Because although we've been just setting up our workshop over the last couple of weeks and setting up our equipment and showing you a couple of prints here and there, but these kinds of things we can do for you, mm -hmm. extreme engineering. So get in touch if you want something really crazy, something like this or something in between or something just like a small modification. Everything's possible with us yeah. with Vulcan Alpha and also together with our partners at Aereos. How am I pronouncing it correctly? I'm going full Swedish here. It's a Latin, Latin word, uh, but um, uh, Aereos. Yeah, okay. Aereos. Aereos. Yeah. Okay, good. And Pimax Wheels that uh, is... Uh, uh, is born for the extreme application and the hyper custom application. Yes. We can make wheels uh, uh, amazing. All, all, all custom we want. Yes. And that's what, what we're about custom yeah. extreme. Okay, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this very detailed explanation. Thank you. If you want to find out more, ask in the comments, follow us. Uh, we'll be definitely keeping you up to date about this build as it goes when we have some bigger updates so we can include them in another half an hour long video <laughs> and now we're gonna go have a nap because tomorrow is gonna be our official shop opening that hopefully many of you have already attended and enjoyed and otherwise stop by yeah in any time soon because now we're officially open another bonus for you because now it's already 2 a.m a couple of hours later and lapo is already busy with scanning the underbody yeah why well, we're going to do a complete flat floor and we have to start doing the splitter design and uh, wow. yeah, also evaluate, evaluating if everything is in tolerances. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So we're uh, using our free scan combo by Shining 3D. By the way, look how beautiful it goes and easy. And we forgot to mention, actually, yeah. the exhaust was made by a good friend of ours that also made the exhaust for the Speedster. Yeah. So whether it's the Speedster or a 1500 horsepower S13 build, so it's uh, MacFab Rication. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, guys, if you need an exhaust, he's one of my best friends and he does really good titanium. He's the Shelby, right? Uh -huh. yeah. When are we getting some titanium? <laughs> Uh, I, don't speak, uh, I don't speak English. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, all right. I want to go home now, but hurry up. Yeah, go. <laughs> it's fine. I'll be here. I'll be here for a little while. Yeah. Mm, cry. <laughs> <laughs>